So far, Best Buy has survived the retail apocalypse, a feat for which it receives a lot of attention, including from us. In fact, the one problem with Best Buy stock is that it's been so darn strong. Following the global financial crash of 2008, Best Buy distinguished itself from both Amazon and other brick and mortar retailers by cutting costs, emphasizing customer service, welcoming popular tech brands into its stores, and matching prices shoppers find online. All this worked. Shares reached an all-time high in 2018, and Best Buy remains an industry leader in consumer electronics. One thing that didn't help? Expanding into the United Kingdom. Best Buy opened its first big box store in the country in April of 2010, with plans to open 200 more across Europe, including in the UK, by 2013. But by the end of 2011, Best Buy canceled that plan. By January 2012, all 11 stores had closed. Best Buy bucked the trend in the US. Why not across the pond? Best Buy's UK expansion began in 2008 with the $2.2 billion purchase of a 50% stake in an existing consumer electronics retailer, Carphone Warehouse. Best Buy was very focused on unit growth and searching out new avenues to drive unit growth rather than optimizing the, the assets that they had in the domestic market. Carphone Warehouse provided about 2,400 new stores in the deal, about 900 in the UK and another 1,500 in continental Europe, where they went by the name The Phone House. Because of that partnership, they thought they could leverage the expertise and, and grow their big box presence in the UK. The plan, part of an overall European venture known as Best Buy Europe, was to challenge existing consumer electronics outlets like Dixon's Retail and Comet. And the crux of that plan? Customer service. I'm not sure that they did wonderful research. One of the things that they, they said correctly was that customer service in what we call electricals was not everything that it might be. And I think any consumer at that time would agree. Best Buy Europe was supposed to be that choice for premium service. The company even emphasized this in its 2008 annual report. People in the UK, um, they, they're much more likely to research online and buy online, that actually the role of the store is quite uh, insignificant. A flawed premise was only the beginning of Best Buy's troubles. Thanks to a delay in conducting a market study, the opening of the first store was pushed from 2009 to 2010. And what did Best Buy's UK competitors, especially Dixon's, do in that time? Their competitors launched uh, enormous uh, efforts to retrain their people and to train them better almost exactly the same time that they entered the market. Nevertheless, Best Buy forged ahead. The company opened its first store at a retail park outside of London in April 2010, a big box store with more than 50,000 square feet of retail space. But those were its next two problems the store's location and size. UK consumers, especially those in or near London, more often shop at smaller stores in city centres, not massive big box stores far out of town. Everything is still very much centralised within cities. You wouldn't take your car and drive to a huge Best Buy to get a fridge. I mean, it's in Essex. I, I don't think anyone from London went there. If they did, consumers likely found the gigantic big box store far too large for comfort. The stores were too big. It's not how people here in the UK are used to shop for um, those kind of electronics. Their partnership was not what it might have been. Uh, Carp and Warehouse, who they had worked with, had been successful in main, what you would call Main Street or we call High Street. Um, but actually, this venture chose to be out of town. And all that space didn't come cheap. Retail real estate in the UK tends to be very expensive and not well suited for the big box model that tends to be successful in the United States where real estate tends to have lower costs and be more economical. To put the size of Best Buy stores in context, take Curry's, a line of consumer electronics stores owned by Dixon's Retail. Around that time, Curry's 550 stores were, on average, less than one-fifth the size of Best Buy's first store in the UK. But perhaps the most important reasons why Best Buy failed in the UK were the most basic. A suffering global economy and a saturated marketplace. 
it was at a very bad timing for macroeconomic condition, I mean, just after the recession. The other one is that I think they overlooked the market and they underestimated competition. Best Buy reportedly spent 200 million pounds on advertising and establishment of its 11 stores. That's about 366 million in 2019 US dollars. But some question how successful this was in explaining what exactly Best Buy was. People had no clue what was Best Buy here, so why would you go to a big store that just opened when you can go to your Curry's or PC World you've been going for years? People, they like to feel that the message is specific to them. They like to feel it's in their language, so the vocabulary they use, and even, dare I say it, even the accent. So they had taken things, I think, directly from American TV advertising and run them here, and that made it feel more alien, really, than it should have done. Best Buy declined to provide CNBC with more information or an interview. In its financial filings, the company does not break out sales figures for the UK specifically. However, for the period it operated in the UK, its sales in Europe declined every year and only accounted for less than 11% of overall sales. Compare that to Dixon's retail sales in the same period. Best Buy closed its 11 big box stores in the UK in 2012, just two years after initially entering the country. A very brief attempt. It could be that it just was impossible for the people who had made this commitment to defend it any longer. The question is, how much more money are you going to pour into it? But what's the opportunity cost? What else could you have done with that money? I think it was very naive to come to the UK and thinking they were going to conquer the market. I think they saw the UK as a small sister of the US and they completely misunderstood the fact that UK, they are part of Europe and they behave like a European market and not like the US.